Every few years, our institute is evaluated by our scientific advisory board. I prepared this talk for our recent evaluation, which covered research in the Perceiving Systems Department over the last six years. Since it summarizes our research in about 25 minutes, I thought it might be interesting for a broader audience. Preparing this talk gave me a chance to reflect on how much we've achieved, and I hope I can communicate some of the excitement we've experienced along the way. Note that I can't cover everything and everyone who was part of our journey, so please visit our website for a full description of our research. I provide a full set of references uh, in the YouTube channel. The central goal of perceiving systems is to train computers to see and understand humans. Computers will not be full partners with humans until they can understand our behavior, our emotions, our goals, our movement. Training computers to understand us is a key scientific challenge and successful systems will enable progress in robotics, healthcare, entertainment, e-commerce, and much more. Given a single image or a sequence of images, however, this is a ch challenging problem. Our goal is to extract information about humans and their behavior. Now, why is it hard? Our bodies differ greatly in terms of their 3D shape. We wear a huge variety of clothing that obscures our body. We move in complex ways. We use facial expressions, posture, and gestures to communicate. Our bodies provide a window, sort of impartial, in, imperfect window into our emotional state. Communication is a social act involving multiple interacting people with varied goals and emotions. Our poses are complex and self-contact makes inference hard. We affect the world through touch and our interaction with objects. But we use more than our hands. We exploit our full bodies when interacting with the world around us. And our contact is not just with objects, but, but with each other, and it is a form of communication. So to address these challenges, we use computer vision to capture humans and their movement. We use machine learning to encode this movement in, and its meaning. We verify our models of human behavior by synthesizing virtual humans behaving in novel 3D scenes. And we use novel computer graphics techniques to render these behaviors and this provides training data that we use to improve our methods for capturing humans. This all results in a virtuous cycle. Ultimately, our goal is to build virtual humans that are indistinguishable from real ones in their appearance and behavior. If we do so, I argue, we will have created a working model of ourselves. At the start of the reporting period, the field was focused on estimating the 2D joints of the body in images. New tools provided by deep learning led to rapid progress and convolutional neural networks or CNNs seemed perfectly suited to detecting joint locations in images. So while the progress was rapid and it was exciting, uh, the problem was that bodies are not joints. We interact with the world to the surface of our body. Contact is necessary for locomotion and object manip manipulation and happens through the skin not through the joints. Facial communication is driven by soft tissue, which moves the skin surface. And our body shape is related to our health. Consequently, our thesis has long been that humans and their behavior are fundamentally 3D, and the field needs tools to analyze 3D human shape in, in motion. To that end, we introduced the simple body model at the end of 2015. Simple was carefully designed to be highly realistic, compatible with existing graphics pipelines, differentiable and computationally efficient. I won't go into the details because this is older work, but the key is that simple factors, body shape, body pose and pose dependent shape deformations. The model is learned from thousands of 3D scans resulting in a function here, M, that returns a 3D mesh given parameters of body shape and pose here, beta and theta respectively. Simple was a pivotal model enabling research and commercial applications on 3D human body shape and motion. But before Simple could have an impact, we needed to teach the world how to use it. The first key paper introduced Simplify, which automatically fits Simple to 2D joints detected by CNNs. Simplify is an optimization method that searches for the shape and pose of the body such that when the 3D body joints, shown here as blue dots, or balls are projected into the image, they match the, the detected 2D joints. The Simplify uh, in this form remains a workhorse of our group and in many others.
But Simplify was slow. So our next key innovation was to train a neural network called HMR to directly regress the shape and pose parameters beta and theta from a single image. The problem was that we had limited data and still do in which we have 3D ground truth poses and shapes together uh, with images. So we had to leverage 2D joints in the training loss by again, minimizing the joint reprojection error that we used in Simplify. When trained on only 2D joints, however, the network was poorly constrained and could produce monsters. So to address this, we used our data that we had about 3D human shapes, which was used to train the simple model, uh, human shapes and poses. And we use this to constrain the solution through discriminative training. If the network produced monsters, the discriminator learned to recognize these, forcing the regressor to produce valid bodies. HMR's other innovation was to iteratively regress the pose and shape parameters. Um, and this worked where other methods hadn't before. HMR has become a standard backbone for methods in the field. Now, both Simplify and HMR have different strengths. To take advantage of the best of both, we developed SPIN. During training, SPIN incrementally improves an HMR regressor by incorporating Simplify optimization in the training loop. Given an HMR regressor, we use the estimated pose as a starting point uh, for Simplify optimization. And this produces a more accurate pixel aligned pose that we then feed back into training. This improves the regressor resulting in better initialization for Simplify and the process repeats. SPIN's unique optimization in the loop approach produced state-of-the-art results and has been widely emulated. Here we see results on the 3DPW set, data set, 3DPW data set, excuse me, that we also introduced in 2018. 3DPW is unique for having in the wild sequences here in downtown Tubingen with high quality reference data captured using inertial measurement units and a handheld camera. 3DPW has become a standard data set in the field. Now, so far, we've only talked about images. To extend HMR and techniques like this to video, we introduced Vibe in 2020 using a neural network architecture designed for temporal processing. Vibe extended the idea of discriminative training over time by using a large data set of motion capture data. Now, while there were many um, motion capture data sets available, each of them had a different format, making it hard to uh, get enough human motion data to train deep networks like Vibe. To address this, we used our MOSH technique to fit simple body models to raw mocap markers. This resulted in a large, varied, and growing data set of motions in a unified body format. So, so far, AMAS has already been a success and is widely used for training neural networks for pose um, prediction, um, uh, human pose prior modeling, uh, et cetera. But to understand human behavior, which is really our goal, we need more than the 3D motion of people. We need to know what the people are doing and why. To that end, we developed a method to label a mass with fine-grained action semantics. The resulting Babel dataset is unique in providing action labels for every frame in the motion sequence, including transitions between actions, shown here as slightly gray regions. I'm not sure if you can see them. Unlike existing action datasets that typically have a limited number of action classes, Babel is significantly more complex with a long-tailed distribution that includes rare actions. This presents challenges for current action recognition and synthesis methods, and our hope is that Babel will drive the field to address more realistic and complex problems. Babel is the foundation of our ongoing work on connecting language and 3D human movement. While Simple has had a wide impact, it's not enough. To model communication and object interaction, we need more. We need a model with hands and facial motion. To that end, we built specific models for the face and hands, Flame and Mano, respectively. They're each based on the principles of Simple and are trained from thousands of 3D scans, many of which were captured in our capture hall. Like Simple, Mano created an opportunity for the field to estimate human hand shape and pose in images and video. Consequently, it has also become a de facto standard. 
In 2019, we put together the individual models of the body, face, and hands to create simple X or simplex, if you will, where X stands for expressive. The expressive body model now includes parameters for the body, as well as the hands and the facial expression. We extended simplify to simplify X to fit the model directly to 2D image features. Simple X was the first expressive body model of its, of its kind, which was learned from 3D data of real people. And it is now a foundation for our reasoning about human behavior in 3D scenes. Now, to move the community away from sparse joints to 3D bodies, we had to provide the tools to make inference from images easy. The same is true if we want researchers to work with expressive bodies. So to support that, our most recent method called Pixie directly regresses simple X parameters from an image. The challenge here is that given a full body image of a person, the hands and face occupy only a small part of the image, giving, making them low resolution and making inference challenging. To address this, Pixie uses body-driven attention to focus on the face and hand regions of the image at higher resolution. I won't go through the details of the network, but the key idea is that it includes moderator networks that learn when to trust the image evidence from the face and hands. For example, if the head is turned away from the camera or the hands are occluded or blurry, these moderators downweight the features from the part networks. This leads to robust performance. Pixie achieves state-of-the-art pose estimation among methods that estimate expressive bodies. Additionally, it captures facial details on par with the best face-only methods. For example, see the wrinkles on the forehead at the right. Additionally, Pixie is the first method to automatically estimate gender-appropriate body shape in a gender-neutral shape space. Pixie's detailed face is able to capture more human emotion than any previous method. The output can be easily animated. And for example, uh, because simple X, the simple X head is built on our flame head model, we can use our VOCA method to automatically animate it given a speech signal. Now, a key advantage of simple X is that it also enables us to reason about contact between the body and the world in detail. Here we see the red regions marking the contact of the body uh, with an object where there, we can label the contact on both the object and on the body. Like the importance of location in real estate, contact is central to understanding human behavior. Humans change the state of the world through contact and understanding such changes is critical. We sit, grasp, pour, and drink through contact. While most research focuses on bodies in isolation, we are trying to drive the field to ground human behavior in the 3D world. To that end, our first work on contact called Obman focused on taking an image of hand object interaction and simultaneously inferring the 3D object shape and the 3D mano hand. The network leveraged novel losses that encouraged hand object contact and discouraged interpenetration. While our mano hand model, um, uh, well, I'm sorry, without our mano hand model, such contact losses would not have been feasible. Uh, this was a novel direction and it has spawned significant follow-up work. But of course, we're interested in more than the hands. To study full body scene interactions, we captured the PROX data set. Using RGBD sensors, where D stands for depth, and 3D scene scans, we estimated simple X bodies by again encouraging contact and preventing interpenetration. The PROX data set includes 12 very scenes and 20 subjects and has become a foundation for our research on human scene interaction. But PROX only focuses on static scenes and doesn't include object manipulation. To capture detailed information about full body motion and contact during object manipulation and use, we collected the GRAB data set. This, to me, is a tour de force in motion capture, including detailed body, face, and hand motion together with object motion and detailed contact regions shown here in red. Unfortunately, I didn't click the button, so you didn't see all of the motions in the, uh, in the red contact regions. 
All right, using that um, data set, we trained GrabNet, which is a neural network that takes uh, a novel object and infers how to grasp it, as shown below. This is just the first step, however, towards our goal of generating full body motions for avatars interacting with the world. So Prox and Grab provide the foundations with which to develop methods for synthesizing human scene and human object interaction. Perceiving Systems has been pioneering this direction of putting 3D people automatically into 3D scenes doing natural things. For example, POSA leverages the PROX dataset to learn a body-centric representation of human scene interaction. Given a body pose, POSA predicts which vertices of the body are likely to be in contact, shown here in blue, and as well, uh, it predicts the class of object being contact, shown here color-coded for different types of objects. Pose is a generative model, and a given pose has um, many possible contacts and semantic interactions. With Posa, we could take a virtual scene like this, which can be rendered realistically like this, and then given posed bodies, Posa searches for places in the scene where these bodies could plausibly be. Here we see simple X bodies rendered into the scene fully automatically. In this case, the simple X bodies were created by fitting simple X to realistic 3D human scans, like those used for architectural rendering. We can then replace the simple X meshes with these realistic scans to produce a scene that is automatically populated by people. And these people are doing things that people would really do in such a scene. But of course, we want more. We want our avatars to move through a novel scene to interact with it. SAMP does just this. The method uses training mocap data to learn how people interact with objects like chairs, tables, and sofas. Then, given a novel scene and a goal like sit on the sofa, SAMP computes the free space in the scene and plans a path to the goal. After walking to the goal, it chooses a location to sit and executes a sitting action that is adapted to the shape of the novel object. This is a critical step towards our goal of synthesizing humans that look like and behave like us. Now, while 3D mesh models based on simple have served us well, they have some limitations. They have a fixed resolution and topology that makes it difficult for us to model varied clothing and hair. These details are needed if we want to realistically render people. Consequently, we've been pioneering new modeling methods based on implicit surfaces and point clouds. Very briefly, we define an implicit human shape by a function that takes an arbitrary 3D point X and the pose and shape parameters of simple. The function is the neural network that returns the distance from the point X to the surface of the clothed body. We can extract an explicit surface if we want by finding the zero level set, that is the surface where the distance is zero. Learning such models from closed scans is challenging, and we have uh, a series of papers over the last year that lay the foundation for this work. Inspired by simple, we learned to transform scans into a canonical pose, where we learn to model um, body shape and clothing variation, as well as pose-dependent shape defor deformations, thus factoring uh, different kinds of deformations, much the way simple did but using implicit models instead of meshes. In doing so, we extend the notion also of linear blend skinning to 3D skinning fields represented by deep neural networks. Our learned models don't require the complex mesh registration used to train simple, but like simple can be posed realistically. This is a really fast moving area of research and we expect it will let us learn realistic avatars from images and videos in the near future. In addition to the basic research that I've sketched, the department is very active in making code and, data, uh, code and data available for research as well as commercial licensing. This is an important way in which we have an impact. In 2013, we spun off Body Labs Inc., which was acquired by Amazon in 2017. Several department members were part of the company and many more have received licensing revenue. Body Labs is among the 10 most successful Max Planck spin-offs, and the technology has made it into multiple products being used by Amazon customers today. 
Our second spinoff, Meshcapade, started in 2018 and has been profitable from day one. The company provides 3D body solutions largely for the clothing industry. It is quickly growing and has uh, closed recently its um, initial angel round. In addition to creating its own technology solutions, Meshcapade sub-licenses much of our technology. For example, six of the top 10 NASDAQ companies have licensed Simple. In summary, I've taken you from human capture to human, human uh, behavior modeling, to creating virtual humans and to synthesizing them in novel scenes. Through this focus on these integrated problems over the last six years, we have moved the field dramatically away from its focus on 2D human representations um, in, the, in the image, typically in the form of joints or skeletons. The key reason for the success has been our philosophy of build what you need and use what you build. This has let us basically teach the community and provide solutions um, that uh, let people tackle new problems and, um, and move the field forward. This has also helped Simple and the related tools become uh, widely popular in the field. So what's next? Uh, as our tools for estimating human motion improve, we are moving towards solving higher level problems related to behavior. To do so, we need richer data. And to get that, we're not gonna get it all in the lab. We need to capture it in the wild from things like movies and TV. Um, to really get at what's going on and motivating people in their behavior, we need language. We need to combine language and motion, both for the, in the capture and in the synthesis of behavior. And this language will help us infer social relationships, emotions, and the goals behind the actions. We're also looking into exploiting physical models of the body and its motion to make things more realistic and physically plausible. We are looking into recovering 3D scene geometry and human interactions with objects that go beyond what we've done already. And then we wanna use all of this to generate avatars that can behave in new environments using high level goals. And finally, we want these to look realistic. We want closed avatars and we wanna be able to capture them from video easily using these new representations like explicit, implicit um, functions and neural rendering. So there's much more that we've done over the last six years that I haven't talked about, of course. Our work with animal shape, infants, medical applications, psychology, optical flow, flying motion capture, facial expression, action generation, and novel data sets. Uh, of course, all of this is available on our website and I encourage you to check it out. I apologize to everyone in the department who has done brilliant work that I wasn't able to talk about today. A department is only as good as the people in it and I'm constantly astounded by the people of perceiving systems. Through a very difficult two years, this group has pulled together, gotten creative and has moved the field forward and I'm deeply grateful to them. Thanks for your attention, I hope you enjoyed it. Take care.